In this video, we'll start looking at examples of using these second order equations and how we can interpret these ideas of oscillations and vibrations to deal with actual word problems. The main point of this whole process is to deal with word problems involving masses on springs and being able to use our methods of second order equations to approach and solve them. So we'll start with an example. A five kilogram mass stretches a spring by 3.7 meters. Yes, that's a big distance, but it turns out you really can't work with problems that actually work out numerically, analytically, without having weird numbers here. Assume that there is a dampener on that spring with a coefficient of 2 newton seconds per meter. This is pulled up by additional 0 0.05 meters and released. Find a function for the position of this mass over time. Round your answer to the nearest whole number, and you find the spring constant. How would you describe the damping of the system? And find a time t such for all t bigger than big t, mass within 0 0.001 meters of the equal position. So we first need to figure out an equation that describes this oscillation. And our base is an equation of the form m times y double prime plus the gamma the damping coefficient times y prime plus the spring constant times y equals zero. And we're told off the bat that the mass here is five and the spring constant here is two. All of these units in this problem work out so that this entire equation is here is in newtons, right? Kilograms times meters per second squared, newtons times meters times meters per second, and then the spring constant times meters will get us the entire equation in newtons. But the only thing we don't have yet is the spring constant. And that is actually hidden in this information here about how far this mass will pull down this spring. So when the spring itself is at equilibrium, it means that the mass pulling down or the force pulling down is the same as the force of the spring pulling it back up. Because we need to have that in that situation, mass times gravity, the force of gravity pulling down, equals the spring constant times L, the length of the extension of the spring. We know everything in this equation except for K. We can solve this to get that 5 times 9.8 meters per second squared for gravity would equal k times 3.77 meters. And this comes out to about 12.997, or rounded comes out to 13. So we'll use 13 here for this problem. So this means I'm left with the differential equation 5y double prime plus 2y prime plus 13y equals 0. But what about initial conditions? Well, in the problem statement, I'm told that this mass will be pulled down by an additional 0 0.05 meters and then released. So the 0 0.05 meters is the additional displacement where it's pulled down that mark before it's released. So that tells me that y of 0 equals 0 0.05. And release means the initial velocity is 0 because I have not put any extra velocity into it when I've let it go. I've just sort of released it and let it on its way. So y prime of 0 is 0. Now we can go we're trying to solve this problem. So to do that, we will start with the character equation of the system, which is 5r squared plus 2r plus 13 equals 0. This doesn't seem to factor. So let's look at the quadratic formula for the roots. We'll get r is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared is 4 minus 4ac over 10, 2 times 5. I'm going to get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 5 is 20. That's 260, 4 minus 260 over 10. This will be root 256 with a negative sign in front of it, so an i out front, and that's 16. So what I will see then is my roots are negative 2 plus or minus 16i over 10, or negative 1 fifth plus or minus 8 fifths i. So what that means, I can write my general solution to this equation as y of t is c1 e to the minus 1 fifth t cosine of 8 fifths t plus c2 e to the minus 1 fifth t sine of 8 fifths t. And now we can use this here to work with our initial conditions. Initial condition, we have that, well, it's something for y of 0, something for y prime at 0. So I can work with y prime first and write out the formula here. This will be done by two applications of the product rule. And when we plug in zero, we can use that to find these constants. The so y of zero, we're assuming is 0.05. And if I plug in zero for t up top here, I will see the sine term goes away because that goes to zero. This goes to one, this goes to one. So I'm just left with c1 here. Fantastic. And then for y prime of zero, I get this should be zero. And when I plug in zero here, both of the sine terms are going to vanish because they're both going to go to zero. So I'll be left with a 
negative one fifth c1 plus an eight fifths c2 from the two cosine terms that are left. So tell me that c1 is 0.05, and c2 I can find because if I add this term over, I will get a 0.01 on this side equals eight fifths c2. So c2 is five eighths times 0.01, or 0 0.00625. Or if you want fraction forms, this will be a 1 over 20, and this will be a 1 over 160. So from that, we get our solution. y of t is 1 over 20 e to the minus 1 fifth t cosine of 8 fifths t plus 1 over 160 e to the minus 1 fifth t sine of 8 fifths t. Let's go back and see what the problem actually asked us for now. We found a function, good, rounded the whole number, great. The damping of the system, well, we're seeing oscillations. So because there's oscillation, this is an underdamped system. And then finally, we want to figure out when this object is within 0 0.001 of the original position. How can we do it? We first have to combine this into a single trig function to get the amplitude to find the envelope curves for this. And so for that, we know that we're gonna get a amplitude that is square root of c1 squared plus c2 squared. So square root of one over 20 squared plus one over 160 squared, which since that was one over 20 is one over eight, I will end up with a one over 20 root one plus one over 64 which will simplify to a root 65 over 160. This means I can rewrite my function here as y of t is root 65 over 160 e to the minus 1 fifth t cosine of 8 fifths t minus phi for some phi. Now I don't know what phi is and I could solve for it, but I don't need to answer this part of the problem. I want to know when I know for sure this is within point zero zero one of the equilibrium solution, which means I want to know when is this envelope curve, which is just this part, less than point zero zero one. So to find this capital T, we want the root sixty five over one sixty e to the minus one fifth t, which is the envelope curves here, to be less than point zero zero one. We can then solve for this. This means that e to the negative one fifth t would be less than 0.16 over root 65. So t should be bigger than negative five log of 0.16 over root 65. By something out that expression there, solving for t. And this comes out to be approximately about 19.6 seconds. After about that much, after about 20 seconds, it'll be within this little strip around. It'll, it'll keep oscillating forever according to our model here, but we know it's within 0 0.001 after about 20 seconds. So to answer all the questions here in this problem, one other point I want to make about this while we're in this example is comparing the quasi frequency to the natural frequencies. The quasi frequency here was this eight fifths that we got of the problem. The natural frequency is what we would get if there was no damping. If there's no damping, my equation becomes just 5r squared plus 13 equals 0. Natural frequency here would be the square root of 13 over 5, which this comes out to be around 1.612, and this is 1.6. So the natural frequency is bigger, and that's always the case. Based on the way the quasi frequency is defined, we know it's always going to be less than the natural frequency. And so. We get that this will oscillate slightly slower than if there was no damping, but it's also going to decay away, which we wouldn't see at all if there was no damping. That's an example of working out what this looks like and how to analyze a physical problem using our solution to second order equations along with the envelope curves for how it's going to behave over time.